Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and I wanted to make another video today on the DJI 2 Mavic Enterprise Advanced, or the M2EA for short. Uh, the last video I did on this drone, I was kind of critical about a few of the features that I felt like had been intentionally dumbed down. And while I stand by those critiques, uh, today I want to talk about something that I think that DJI got incredibly right on this drone, and that's its thermal camera, its resolution and capabilities. Um, so today we're going to take a look at how to shoot thermal images and video on this camera. We're going to talk about how to use the thermal zoom, and we're going to talk about how to get uh, temperature readings right on your screen while you're shooting. Then when we're finished with that, we're going to move some of our videos and images over to the computer, and we're going to take a look at those in DJI's thermal analysis tool. We'll look at its capabilities and how to create a meaningful report for your clients. So let's go ahead and get the drone in the air and take a look. Okay, so I already have the drone in the air. If you would like to watch a video on launching this drone using DJI Pilot, tap the link to the video of my first flight of the M2EA. You'll notice on the left of the screen we have two buttons. Since I'm already viewing through the visible camera, the button options are Split and IR. I'm going to go ahead and tap IR to view through the thermal camera. Notice on the right side of the screen there are two zoom scales displayed. The one on the left says IR and the one on the right says Visible. Right now they're both set to one times zoom. Since I'm currently using the thermal camera, I will only worry about the IR zoom scale. At first glance, you may think you can change the zoom by sliding the scales, but that isn't the case. To change zoom, you must tap the plus or minus buttons at the top and bottom of the zoom scales. I'm going to zoom in to two times and take a still shot. I can toggle back and forth between video and still images by tapping the toggle icon just under the word menu on the far right of the display. Whenever you take a photo or record video, the sensors in both the visible light camera and the thermal camera record simultaneously, so you'll always have two versions of what you're recording, the visible light version and the thermal version. Now that I've taken the photo zoomed in at two power, let's take a look at what's on the SD card. Right away you'll notice that it didn't record at the zoom setting we were using when we shot the picture. It turns out the zoom is only for us to use while we're flying so that we can get close views without necessarily flying close. But to actually have the image show zoomed in, we would need to open it in a photo editing program like Photoshop and crop in. Notice also that we do indeed have two versions of the same image, a visible light version and a thermal version. Now let's go back to the flight screen and look at how to change the color palette of the display. Depending on what you're recording, some color palettes will make it easier than others to highlight what's important in the scene. You can experiment with this while you're shooting and choose what works best for the situation. To change the color palette, tap the Painter's Palette icon just below the drone's battery display in the upper right part of the screen. This will open up a group of color patch icons along the bottom of the screen that you can swipe through and tap to select. One of the cool things we'll see in a bit is that regardless of which palette you shoot an image in, you can change it in DJI's thermal analysis tool later if you decide another palette works better. So for me, I'll keep it in iron red for now and I'm going to shoot a short video clip of my subject. Notice the point near the center of the screen where we see the temperature displayed. This is because I tapped this area of the screen earlier. To get a temperature reading on anything in your scene, simply touch that spot on the screen. So if I wanted to see the temperature of different walls in this scene, I can just touch them. Same thing with the parking lot. Okay, now that we have an image and a video clip, let's move them over to the computer and see what we can do in DJI's thermal analysis tool. Okay, to download the DJI thermal analysis tool 2.0, you'll need to go to DJI's website and specifically their download center. And I'll put a link to this page in the description below. Once you install the analysis tool, it will probably default to Chinese as the language. In the lower left part of the screen where it says CN in orange, just click to the right of that in the white space and that will change it to English. You'll notice that there are three possible tabs at the top, Home, Analysis, and Report, and we're going to start off in the Home tab by default. And to select the folder where your images and videos are stored, you're just going to click this icon here and it will let you browse out to the folder that they're located in. I already have mine selected and you see that it brought in two files. So let's go look at the folder where our images and videos are. You, you'll remember I took one still shot and one short little video clip and I have four files. That's because one is thermal and one is visual light. And the same is true for the videos. Videos are very useful to give to your client 
but probably more so if you record them right off of your smart controller so that they can actually see any image readings that you take. And they're handy to supplement the information that we're going to give them with our analysis that we're about to do in the DJI thermal analysis tool. But the tool itself only works with still images. It does not work with video. Once you select the folder where, you, where your image files are stored, they're going to show up in the preview section here, the working section. And to actually start analyzing one of these images, all you have to do is double click it. To zoom in and out, you can use the scroll wheel of your mouse. And you'll notice after you double click it, we're now in the analysis tab. We've got a group of tools on the left and some information on the right also. At the very top right here, we have our temperature unit and it defaults to centigrade, but you can change that by clicking in the combo box and changing that to Fahrenheit. Just below our temperature unit selection, we have some environmental information. And just below that, we have some information about our image itself, its resolution, the image name on, on file, uh, what the camera model was that was uh, used to take the image, things like that. Along the left here are our analysis tools, and the very top left one is our color palette. And you'll remember from the video earlier that it doesn't really matter what palette you shoot in, because you can always come in here into the analysis tool and select a different palette if something else works better. I think for this one I'm going to select medical and just below that we have some text size icons and I'll show you how those behave right now. Out to the right of the palette icon we have a point icon. If we select that point tool we can click anywhere on our image and get a temperature reading of that exact point. So this is point one designated with P1 and our information pops up here at the left and it says P1 is 81.2 degrees. I can select that tool again and choose another point. We'll choose one of these points here, one of these bright spots. P2 is now showing up and P2 is 101.9 degrees. If I need this text to be larger, I can just come here and select my large text icon or big font and it will increase the size of that text for me. Then I've got medium text, which is the default, and then very small text. I'm going to keep mine at medium. Just below those text icons is a left icon, which it's already set to. And that just means that after we select our points, the information about those points pops up at the left of our image. If I select this icon that says normal, it's going to pop that information right down with the point itself. And that becomes a little harder to read, so that's one instance where I might need to increase the font size if I, were, if I was going to keep it down there. But I'm actually not. I'm going to keep it to the left. But I also could select right by clicking that icon. Below those icons, we have a text color icon, and that lets us do exactly that. We can change the color that our text is displayed in. I think I'll keep it white. And below the text color icon, we have a cursor following tool. If I select that tool, wherever I move my mouse cursor over the image, I'm going to get a readout, a temperature readout. Below that icon, we have a isotherm icon. Now, since we shot this image with the M2EA, we don't actually have to use the isotherm tool. What that would do if we shot this, let's say, with an H20T uh, camera, the Zenmuse camera, we would need to turn on isotherm to get the scale bar here on the right. But with the M2EA, that just pops in on its own. And at the very bottom is a trash can icon that says delete all. And if I click that, any points or any to analysis tools that we put on the image at all are going to be deleted. So I'll go ahead and click that now, and it gets rid of our points. Now in the right column again, the second one down, under the point tool, we have a line tool. And with a line tool, we can click and drag a line across a section of our image. And what that's going to give us is a bit of information about the temperatures covered in that line. It lets us know what the maximum temperature is in that line what the minimum temperature is, and what the average temperature is across that line. And if we select that again, of course, we could draw more lines. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Below the line tool, we have an area tool, and it behaves a lot like the line tool, except we click and drag out a rectangle, and we get the same type of information. We can also select circle and draw a circle and get max, min, and average temperatures, and any of these shapes can be clicked and dragged, and the information will update. 
So you can click and drag those to new areas to analyze. So they're really powerful tools, really quick, intuitive, and easy to use, and they give you a lot of good information right off the bat. Finally, there is a polygon tool. We select that, but we don't click and drag. Instead, we just click to define points. And then to close it, you can right click, and that will close that polygon. And it can also be moved around. Below that is a trash can icon to delete whatever the last selected tool was. So since the polygon was the last one we did, if I click that, trash can, it's going to remove the polygon. But I'm going to go ahead and delete everything. Then we have a set of icons for orienting the picture itself. Right now it's at no flip, which means that it is the orientation that it was shot in. Below that I can flip it vertically. Below that I can flip it left to right. And below that I can flip it diagonally. And then I can reset it with no flip. To the right of our screen we have the isotherm scale. And right now it's taking into consideration everything within the image and it's telling us that our highest temperature within the whole image is 114 degrees Fahrenheit and our coolest temperature in the whole image is 60. Now we can actually decrease the band so that it only shows up temperature ranges that we're really interested in and this can be really useful if you know that you're looking for an anomaly within a certain temperature range like if you were doing search and rescue and you wanted to only look for say the temperature that a human body might be so like 75 to 95 degrees you can narrow that temperature band and they're really going to stand out. So for instance now we see that anything above uh, 95 should show up white and anything below 73 should show up black and green is in the middle there so you know if I were, were to uh, actually hover over green we see that yep, it's within that range. And so that's that's one way to kind of block out information that you don't need. You see how it's just kind of washed out the parking lot in the sky up here because that's going to be outside of the range that we're looking for. Uh, so isotherm can be handy again if you're looking for any type of anomaly that you know is going to be within a certain temperature range. So let's go ahead and reset all that. So those are our analysis tools. Let's say that we just wanted to give a quick comparison between the shady side of the building and a side of the building that's absorbing full sun and compare it also with maybe the roof of the building. So I can choose my point tool. I can select the shady side for point one, the sunny side of the building for building for point two, and the roof for point three. I have my information right there. And now I could click the report tab and I could save that image with the markup on it. You can select your company's logo to go along with the report, put in a custom title. any comments that we wanted to make and then just click export pick so far I haven't had any luck with the export text report tool when I click that it asks me to browse out to where I would like to place my report and I click save and the wheel spins for a little bit and then I usually get an error message. So I'm not sure what's going on there but it's not impeding me a whole lot because honestly I, I don't mind typing up my own reports anyway and then just using the images that I mark up as the uh, as the real meat of the information that I'm going to turn over to my clients. And these tools make it, make it so simple. I mean really quickly I can tell my clients exactly what they need to know about the temperature range or, or any specific spots of, of interest on an image or a piece of equipment that I'm looking at. So let's take a look at the image that we exported just a second ago. And there it is. And so that's pretty much it guys. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how to use some of the thermal capabilities of the uh, M2EA and also how to analyze those images in uh, the DJI thermal analysis tool. I'm going to definitely be making more videos as I learn more about this uh, particular drone. So if you like these uh, videos, please like and subscribe. And thanks so much for watching. Fly safe.